What's going on everybody? Welcome to another Zabbix video. This time we are monitoring Linux services using systemctl. This video will also provide you a great way how to replace a string metric with a numeric one. And the reason you would like to do that is just to save the precious disk space. I did a similar video some time ago with Windows PowerShell, but this time the value replacement will be executed at Zabbix server side, so it is kind of a universal approach here. Ok, the base setup here, I have installed two user parameters, two custom item keys. One item will take care of finding out how many services are running under the system, and the second item will gather the actual status of service. If you are running an operating system coming from Red Hat family like CentOS, you may want to disable SE Linux or install missing SE Linux policies afterwards, so the monitoring will execute properly. Right now, using Zabbix get utility, I will simulate the discovery key. It can consume more than 3 seconds to obtain the data, so watch out the timeout attribute configured at Zabbix agent configuration file. Ok, here is the list of the services in a JSON format, basically one line per each service. The service title will get passed to our second item key system.systemctl.status which accepts arguments. Let's try a few examples right away to find out what type of content these items are producing. Firstly, I will try this item with the service title syslog. I can see this Zabbix item is reporting multi-line content, a lot of information here. Second example, when the service title is rsync. And the third example with the service title networking. Now we can observe the differences between these services. Syslog, status is running. Rsync, service is dead. Networking, service is exited. After all, we are interested only in line starting with the keyword active. And look at what keyword is placed inside parentheses. Apart from the status of service, there is additional useful information we can look if this service is scheduled to run at system startup. This information is available in the line starting with the keyword loaded. And this time we are interested in the keyword enclosed by two semicolons. Luckily there are only two semicolons in this line. Now with the configuration at the front end. I have here a pre-made template, which is also available through the video description. This template can be used starting with Zabbix 4.0, but I will use 4.2 because of the ability to simulate the pre-processing steps and see the outcome of each step. The template contains one discovery. Let's open it up. Because of Zabbix agent active, the discovery item will execute always when the agent gets restarted, plus the update interval still applies. Apart from discovery, I have one master item, item prototype more precisely. Every time the master item will gather the service status, it will pass the output to each dependable item. This means we can have a different instruction on what kind of bit we are interested for each dependable item. The first dependable item is dedicated to find out the status of service. Opening up the item, going to preprocessing tab, I have separated the preprocessing into four steps just to better understand what is going on. 
let's feed right away some content to test the pre-processing. Going directly to command line, grabbing the raw content and going back to front end. Click test all steps, open the value field, paste the content, apply. Clicking test button. At first I am filtering out one line where the necessary bit is located. In the second step I am extracting exactly the keyword what is stored inside parentheses. Third step, whatever the keyword was captured in this step I must print it out plus write a value map regarding each possibility. The semicolon in this context has only a separator meaning. In the last step I am following up the value map and extracting only the corresponding number which matches my string in the third step. Let's try to place a different content in the parentheses. I will install there a keyword exited. Apply. The last step still contains a number one, but after hitting test again, now it shows number two, because the value map says so. If we will have a content which is not mentioned in the value map like ASDF, then after hitting the test button Zabbix will go crazy. To integrate this new value as an option we need to modify two preprocessing steps. At first include the value at the value map and secondly allow to capture this value in the first capturing group in the last step. Now after hitting again the test button it produces the number 5. This is the preprocessing for one dependable item. Going back to all item prototypes, I see here are other items too. The startup item is using the very same technique, let's open it up. I still have the raw content in the clipboard, so I will just insert it in the value field and click test button. This dependable item works with a different line and is extracting content located between semicolons. And that's all the difference. In the item prototype list I do have a third dependable item called contains condition. This is a bit different topic, it deserves a different video title. I will not explain it right now. Don't you even think about opening the preprocessing tab of this item and trying to understand what's going on. Okay, but as a happy ending, I guess the latest data page must be served on screen to show how the metrics are representing there. Searching for host, applying the latest data page. There are strings all over the place because the template did also include a definition of value map. But the metrics enclosed in parentheses are showing us how they are actually stored inside the database. And those are numbers, the most efficient way how to store the metric in Zabbix. Alright, that's all I wanted to show you today. If you like this video, kindly hit the like button. And as always, thanks for watching.